Welcome. This is an Innovations Technology Solutions video and it goes along with the blog post device or resource busy errors in Linux. What I'm going to do in this video is give you a general overview of some of the examples that were outlined in the post. There's not going to be anything overly in depth on this so um, if you want more detail have a look at the blog post itself or listen to the audio transcript. The first thing I want to do is look at uh, what happens when you try and unmount a CD that's being used. So if I type sudo umount media and cd-rom0 cd-rom0 is the mount point for the CD that I'm currently using. I hit enter and it tells me that the device is busy and it also tells me to take a look at LSOF and F user. Now those two cam commands are, are uh, useful commands for finding out who or what is using a file that you're trying to access. So first off I will try LSOF. I'll do sudo LSOF um, and uh, media CD-ROM 0 and the first thing I notice is that I get this warning here and it basically says that LSOF can't uh, look into the known virtual file system. Now this error should be pretty harmless um, so I, I wouldn't worry about it too much but it's always a good idea to check errors and warnings out on your own to make sure that they're not going to cause you any problem in the future. Um, to keep this warning from coming up and I, I can add the lowercase w option to LSOF that's basically just a, a suppressed warning option hit enter now I get nice clean output without the warning at the top what this shows me is that um, the command that is accessing uh, the CD-ROM is bash so I've got a bash shell sitting somewhere that's accessing it gives me the PID in case I need to run uh, the kill command on that PID later to, to uh, terminate the process. It tells me which user is using or uh, running the process that's using the CD-ROM. In this case it's me, Jay Wright. Uh, also gives me this information here which tells me what type of access that this process has uh, on the file. and this says CWD which stands for current working directory. That means that bash is using a directory uh, inside the CD-ROM file structure or file system as a, its current working directory. And if I look, skip over here to the name column, you see that there's media CD-ROM Casper. Casper kind of wraps around onto the next line here. Um, and that tells me what direct directory is actually being used um, for the current working directory. I can also use the fuser command sudo fuser-mu media cd-rom0 and what this does the m for fuser um, specifies that you want it to look down inside of a mounted file system like the cd-rom if not, it'll just kind of gloss over the top of that, that mounted file system and not really look down into it. The U specifies that you want it to um, attack the username onto the end of the output, as you can see here. It's tacked on JWrite. And the output that I get from FUser, besides this username here, it gives me the PID, which is the same one that LSOF gave us, in this single character code here and in this case the C stands for current working directory which is the type of access code and it's the same thing that LSOF gave us. Now if you want to know what some of the other letters are uh, for this you can have a look at the at F users man page uh, they have a list of all of the character codes and what they mean in that. So armed with this information I, I you know start thinking and and looking around and I notice if I go to this next virtual terminal here that my current working directory of this virtual terminal is that Casper directory. 
So it's just, you know, it could just be something I forgot. There could be another user logged onto your system that has used the CD command to descend into that directory. Uh, there are a lot of different situations where the the directory could be being used this way, but it's it's very easy to to remedy the situation, especially when it's just me that's using it. I can either uh, type uh, you know exit or log out to exit this virtual terminal, or I can just change to another directory that's outside of the CD-ROM um, file system. So now if I go back and I uh, go back up to my sudo umount command and hit it. There you go. It's unmounted. So I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen here so that we can move on to the next example. Uh, for this next next set, I want to take a look at uh, services and processes that are taking part in the TCP wrappers protection mechanism. And a, a good quick way to do that is to type lsof lib libwrap.so.0. If I hit enter, this gives me a listing of all of the services or processes that are that's using the TCP wrappers mechanism. Now this libwrap is the primary library for the TCP wrappers mechanism and you can see here what version I'm running. Uh, but you can see that the uh, there's uh, Pulse Audio is using it. Uh, there's a couple instances of Chrome using it. Uh, and there's also uh, Record My Desktop, which I'm actually using right now to record this screencast. Now, if I want network connection information along with that, I can add the lowercase i option uh, onto this and the lowercase i option requires an argument and it's a multi-part argument uh, that's made up of, of different um, specifiers for the type of network connections you want to look at. You can specify IP version 4 versus IP version 6, um, TCP versus UDP, that type of thing. And if you want uh, more information on the arguments or the argument the multi-section argument, you can take a look at the blog post uh, or the man page for LSOF. But in this case, I since we're looking at TCP wrappers, I just want to look at the network connections that are using the TCP protocol. So I add TCP onto that and I hit enter. And you can see down here at the bottom, it's wrapped around from one line to the next. But you can see that Chrome has a TCP connection established. Actually has two. Uh, oh, that's the same connection. Um, it gives you the information like the protocol which we specified. The name of the computer which my local computer is named Topbuntu. Um, the what direction the connection is going, what it's connected to. It'll show you the fact that it's using HTTPS, uh, the secure HTTP connection and it'll give you the status of the connection as well which in this case is established. So that is how you check your network connections. I'm going to go ahead and clear this move on to the next example. Uh, this example shows what you would do if you have multiple processes accessing the same file or what you could do. Um, if I create just a, a temporary file temp test file .txt, um, this is just a throwaway file that I'm going to use for this this uh, example. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to another virtual terminal. I'm going to type tail f temp test file dot txt. And what that's going to do, this dash f option causes tail to follow the end of the test file dot txt file. So anything, anytime any data is added to this text file here um, it is shown by the tail command. So if I hit enter there you'll see that it doesn't exit it just sits there and waits for more data to be added. Now I want to do the same thing here now, uh, temp test file txt. So right now I have two instances of tail running and accessing that file. 